Captain. Whoa! I've got some old folks, but don't go away. I'll be back! <laughs> Drum oil awaiting shipment here, but is it there's much chance of saving them? And there goes a warehouse, a crashing truck of mass of stone and steel. This is Jeff Morell signing off and returning you to the main studio's Allied Broadcasting System. Well, how did I do, Angie? A couple inches nearer, and you'd have been a smoke pan. Hey! Not bad, get it? <laughs> I get it. Where's my pipe? <laughs> come on, come on, let's get going. Josie? I ain't talking. Go on in. Thank you. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Fine, Bert. Right on the beam. How'd you like that fire yesterday? That ought to cinch that London assignment for me, hadn't it? Well, I don't know. Oh, come on, Bert. Come on. How do we stand? Right now, I'd say you were about nip and tuck. Oh, I nip, huh? Uh-uh. You're tuck. He's nipped. Thompson? Him and his stale views behind the news. He's a good man, Jeff, and he knows the story. Yeah, but he doesn't know London, Bert. His delivery's about as exciting as a pause for station identification. The old man liked the scoop on the occupation of Iceland. Yeah. He's got a good delivery, too. Listen. Has settled down on a small farm in Michigan where he is living in peace and quiet after one of the most hectic careers of modern times. Now, names in the news. Today's name appeared in a small item tucked away inside your newspaper, and you probably skimmed over it with never a second thought. A young man who was sent up for his alleged activities with a crooked gambling ring in this city was released today after serving three years of a four-year term. And the name? Eddie Nelson. You know Eddie Nelson gets out today. Time sure does fly, doesn't it? I bet it didn't fly for Eddie. He did three years on a bet for your mob. Yeah, I know. But I'm not letting you make a fall guy out of me. Don't be a bad loser, will you? When you moved in on me, I didn't squawk. I thought there was enough for everybody. But when you try to shove me out, I'll go to the grand jury if I have to. You wouldn't squeal. I don't call it that. Anyway, I'm doing it. I don't care who gets hurt. Might be you. Save that for the suckers. I don't scare. Now get out. Okay, we. And don't stop to say goodbye. Get out. Okay. Eddie. Eddie Nelson. Hello, Eddie. Remember me? Joey Fine. Yeah, hello, Joey. How are you? Looks like you're doing all right here. Oh, so-so. Remember Longshot? He's driving for me now. Hiya. Hello, Longshot. I hope you didn't think the boys would forget what day this is. No, I didn't think they'd forget, but I... Uh... Come on, I'll take you wherever you're going. If you don't mind, Joey, I don't think... Oh, I... come on, get in. What are you going to do, take the streetcar? Don't be a jerk. <laughs> I'll take you there in style. Still doing those crossword puzzles, Longshot? Sure. I know how you feel, kid, but don't hold a grudge against me. I'm with you. I'm not holding anything against anybody. 
You've got some dough coming from Wingy. And you oughtn't to pass it up. Let him keep it. Look, you did him a big turn. Go up and see him. I talked to him. You did? Yeah, and he'll pay off. Why don't you see him? He'll be in his office at 5. I think this place ought to be right around the corner here somewhere. Turn at the next corner, long shot. Eddie. It's no skin off my nose. But if you change your mind, Wingy will be in around five. Thanks for the lift. Forget it. Call me up if you need anything. I was saying, old boy, in just about a fortnight, I'll be in London having my tea and crumpets. And I don't mean crumpets. You can dream, can't you? After tonight's fight, I'll be nipped. And I'll be making reservations for London. Kid will be a pushover for the champ. Don't fight. <laughs> Not the way I'll broadcast it. Ah, food! Well, it's about time. I'll take that tomorrow. <laughs> Thompson speaking. I've got a tip for you, Norm. Don't think you want to talk in front of Jeff, do you? Of course not, Tom. I'll come over to your place. Right. Take care of the check, will you, Jeff? Oh, of course, as usual. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Been listening in again, huh? What's up now? The Greek just bet 20 grand against the champ. Who'd he book it with, Wingy? No, Wingy's supposed to be quitting. Didn't you know? No. Sure, Wingy hasn't taken a bet for some time. I wonder why. Look, Blanche, if anybody calls me here, I'll be back in an hour or so. Don't you want to see the Greek? No, I want to see Wingy. Go on in. Hello, Wingy. Hello, Eddie. I'm glad to see you. Thanks. I just got out. Yeah. If you're thinking of getting back in the business, kid, I tell you that... I think that you owe me some dough. Yeah, sure. You took a bad rap for us, kid. You got something coming to you. But you see, the boys have been kind of pulling a few fast ones on me lately, and I... Well, I'm not as well healed as I used to be. I wasn't going to come around at all, but... Uh... I thought that when I came back, there'd be a job waiting for me. They seem to know too much about me in this town. I gotta get out of here. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll split 50-50 with you with what I've got. 500 do you any good? Sure. Thanks, Wingy. You're an all right guy. Good luck, kid. So long. Just left. Who was he? Um, Nelson. Uh, Eddie Nelson. The police. Now take it easy. Everything's going to be all right. Janning's office. Jonesy, give me Bert. You wait here. Bert, Thompson talking. Now listen. I'm in Wingy Keefe's office. He's just been murdered. Was killed in his office exactly 32 minutes ago. The police learned about the murder when your reporter summoned them to the scene of the crime. Furthermore, I have already placed them on the track of the killer. They are now looking for Eddie Nelson, who was recently released from the state penitentiary. I saw Nelson rushing away from Keefe's office just before discovering the gambler's body. If you listen to my earlier broadcast about Nelson, you will readily understand that the motive... You'll readily understand that the motive... Uh, the minute I go out of town to cover a frowsy fight, he stumbles and comes up with a rose in his hand. I suppose that makes him nip. 
Will you please stop that, Angie? I shouldn't have bet those cream puffs and pickles. Bet I get per term main person. Hey, stop the car at the sign. Dolly and Polly. You know, I feel like buying them a drink. No, we can't make it. Oh, my head. Got it. Yeah. We've had an accident. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a busted gam. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to break your leg. That's a good idea. Huh? No. No. No, that isn't any good. I've got it. Yeah. We've got a while leading into this hotel to pick up Archie Meyer's band, haven't we? Yeah. Good. You get on the truck, get out to the fight grounds as quick as you can. Yeah, but we gotta be on the end of the air in ten minutes. I'll be on, but from downstairs. I'll grab the line and fake the beginning until you can relay the fight to me by phone. Yeah, now Jeff, get going, but... Babu, get going. Yeah, Mac? That's the standing. Morrell's on the phone. Ready to broadcast the fight from Ocean City. Are you kidding? That's what he said. Okay, Mac. Give them the ghost signal and patch them on my speaker, but don't put them on the air. Hey, fellas, yeah. Jonesy, come on in. Jeff Morell's going to broadcast the fight. But the fight's been... Yeah, yeah, I know. Come on, sit down. Oh, this ought to be good. Oh. Good evening, sports fans from coast to coast. This is Jeff Morell. About to bring you a blow-by-blow -blow description of tonight's O'Malley Loga Championship fight. Everything happens to me. We'll never make the broadcast. It's uh, it's a little late, so uh, it's going to be difficult for us to give you the usual color of this great event. But uh, here comes the challenger now. Listen to that applause. Of course, there are a few boos for the butcher boy. And here comes the champ in his famous purple dressing gown. He looks very fit, folks. Very fit. And what an ovation! Hey. Hey, Jack, uh, make sure that fight was postponed, will it? The contestants face each other across the ring. As the referee... Uh, there goes the ten-second buzzer, ladies and gentlemen. The two men sit glaring at each other. And here's the bell! Boys come out swinging. The champ goes straight for his man. But O'Malley circles and Loga misses. Hey, the fight's postponed, all right. He's on the Jason Beach loop. Loga backs the challenger into the ropes. What a left hand the boy has. He lets go with a left jab. And another! And another! Hey! I bet your buck Loga knocks him out. You covered. Loga backs O'Malley into a neutral corner. O'Malley can't get away. Loga hits him with everything he has. A one-two. Another left. High on the head. A right. Another right. And another. And another! Now they're in the center of the ring. Loga rocks him with a right. The champ follows him across the ring. O'Malley faints. He lets go with a terrific right hand. Now the champ is backing up. O'Malley's chasing him around the ring. He hits him with a left, high on the head. And a right, and a right, and another right, and another right, and then... A... Postponed. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my idea of what might have happened tonight if the fight hadn't been postponed. Yes. This, uh, this is Jeff Morrell signing off. You might as well answer it. Now you listen to me, you half-baked phony. For two cents, I'd have you barred off every station in the country. What if you'd been on the air? You'd have made me the laughing stock of the entire country. What's the old man going to say? Fired. That's the impression I got. Hey, who won the fight? Nip. That that's all. Hey, look. Thompson's picture's in the paper. Who's the girl? 
I don't know, but she's plenty good looking. And I was the bright boy who was going to beat him out of that London job. <laughs> Olive oil. That Thompson. What luck. You'll have to detour up the Indian route. The beach road's closed. What's the matter? There's a big ship of fire off the coast, and the road's all jammed up with traffic and relief workers. Yeah, what ship? The Lona Queen. The Lona Queen? Angie, turn down on the beach. Get going. Wait a minute, you can't do that. That's all right, officer. Allied broadcasting system. Thanks a lot. <laughs> that burning ship may take me to London. Wait a minute, hey! They don't answer. Well, try Atwater. Where's Stevenson? I've tried them all. Nobody's home. Now, Thompson's always around when I don't want him. Oh, why did the Lorna Queen have to burn on Saturday night? Hello? Jeff Morrell. He insists on talking to me. I don't want to talk. All right. Now, listen, you has been, you're through, and there's no use calling up. All right, all right. If you change your mind, you can call me back. I'm at, uh... Belmore, three, four, six. Well, I won't change my mind. Belmore, point that's for the Lorna Queensburg. Get him back. Get. Hello, Jeff. Jeff, now listen. You gotta cover that fire. But I'm not working for you anymore. No, I was fired. You remember? Now listen, have pity on my blood pressure and cover that fire. All right, I'll see what I can do for you. Tell Mac to give you a time check. Call me back. Okay. We interrupt this program to take you to Belmore Point, where Jeff Morrell, your ABS special events commentator, is waiting to bring you an exclusive eyewitness description of the burning Lorna Queen. Come in, Morrell. This is Jeff Morrell at the scene of the catastrophe. The Lorna Queen is still burning like a torch, lighting up the water all around it. The last rescue boats are approaching the beach. If anyone yet remains aboard the burning ship, they're beyond help. No one could survive in that raging inferno. Here on the beach, pitiful figures in nightgowns, pajamas, and evening clothes are huddled around me. A few short minutes ago, they were singing, dancing, sleeping on board the huge liner, unaware of the tragedy that was about to strike. Many of them couldn't find places in the boats, jumped into the sea. Some of them made it, and some... It's impossible to predict at this time what the awful toll may be. Will you tell me your name, please? Mrs. Sherman. Well, Mrs. Sherman, uh, will you tell us what happened at the time the fire struck? Please, I can't talk. But just the radio audience, what happened? Was an alarm rung? Yes. I don't know. All of a sudden, we heard someone hollering, fire. We ran upstairs and up on deck, and people were getting in the lifeboat. My husband helped me in one, and they were lowering the lifeboat. The rock broke. This is the last I've seen of him. I can't talk anymore, but please, please. Thank you very much, Mrs. Sherman. <laughs> to speak to as many of the survivors as possible. Nurse, can I speak to the little girl, please? Hello, honey. What's your name? My name is Ellen. I got me silly. What's her name, nurse? Her name's Delilah, but they call her Dylan. Oh. I want my mom and Bobby. Oh. It's no use. Come on, doll. Come on. The little girl you just heard is named Delilah or Dilly. She's about three and a half years old. Brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone knowing her name or remembering her voice, get in touch with the Belmont Point Hospital. Don't cry. I'll find your mom. Oh, nurse, today. will you come over and help me, please, over here? Yes, sir. Would you take care of this child for me? Oh, sure. Say, come back some other time. Bye. Goodbye, Dilly. Bye. 
Goodbye, Dilly. Here's a young girl. I should say about 22 or 3 years old. Is she hurt badly, Doctor? Uh, just exposure, hard action, good. She's a brunette, I should say about 5 foot 2, wearing a dark dress. And... The Lorna Queen is still blazing out there. She's moving slowly toward the beach. But it probably will be hours before we... We'll be on the air shortly with a complete list of survivors. Your announcer is Jeff Morrell. This is the Allied Broadcasting System. That ain't me. Come on, Angie. There are a lot of stretches out there. Let's give them a hand. Oh, sure. Not that one, this one. What's the dip? Come on, you baboon, get a hold of that. I don't get it. Did you ever see that face before? Holy codfish, that's the, that's the Richards thing. Yeah, Susan Richards. That's Thompson's big story. And we're stealing it right out from under his nose. And with the whole country looking for him, I'm gonna be the guy that catches Eddie Nelson. Wow. Yeah, Jeff. But suppose her boyfriend didn't get off that ship. Well, I gotta take that chance. If he did, he's got to turn up sooner or later, and I'm gonna be there when he does. Oh. <laughs> Brother, it'll be the story of the century. <laughs> da, 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 da. That's the big story, Angie. London. This was a story, too, eh, Jeff? Ah, uh, this was nothing. Nothing. Nothing but a lot of people getting killed, and babies crying for their mothers. And... Now, what's eating you? Uh, you're a swell guy, Jeff, but sometimes you give me the goose pimples. Oh. I what? You're... Well, you're okay, Jeff, but you got, like a horse, you got blinders. You only see the part of the story you're talking about. You don't see what's with the people. They got a heart. Angie, that's right off the cob. Well, I don't know how to say it, but someday something's gonna come hit you in the kisser, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Well, if you feel like that, maybe you'd like to... Ah, you know I'd go the route for you. Well, then shut up. I'm a radio reporter, and I've got to give them the facts. Now, step on it. Oh. Uh. Uh. Take it easy. Who are you? I'm Jeff Morrell, Allied Broadcaster. The emergency hospital was full and they called for volunteers. So I thought I'd help by bringing you into town. But I've got to get back. I've got to... You're shivering. Here, this will help. If you're worried about your friends, they've all been taken care of by now. You're in no condition to go back. But I can't. I... Wait a minute. Drink a little of this. Thanks. You're very kind. Where are you taking me? Oh, don't worry. You'll be safe. Come on, a little more.
Hi, you, Mom. We gotta have more. That's plenty. Scat, go into the dining room and sit down. Mom, I said we've got to have more. <laughs> you see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. We've got to have more. Come on, darling. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, uh, Mom, I should meet Miss, uh, Miss... Uh... Williams. Grace Williams. How do you do? No. Miss, uh, Miss Williams was on the Lorna Queen, Mom. Oh. Yes, and uh, there was no more room in the emergency hospital, so I... You brought her home. Why, of course, that must have been a dreadful experience for you, dear. I listened to the whole thing. It was simply... Oh, my goodness, the hotcakes. <laughs> Why don't you sit down? Thank you. You're looking much better today. I, uh, I hope you slept well. Yes, thank you. I think you'd better figure on staying here a while. I couldn't. There are so many things I have to do. Well, suit yourself. But I think you ought to stay until you get your strength back. She's not thinking of leaving. Yes. Yeah. I think she's a little skeptical about your cooking, Mom. Have you any other place to go, dear? Well, no. I... Then we won't say another word about it. You start on your orange juice and we'll go right on from there. Hey, Jeff. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, Angie, you, uh... uh you know Miss Williams, don't you, Angie? Oh, uh, yeah. Hello. See the paper? Oh! Sit down, Angie. Have some hot cake. I already ate my breakfast. Oh, very well then. But I could start on my lunch. All right, here. <laughs> He's always eating. His father was frightened by a lunch check. <laughs> you know, Miss... Come on, Angie. We'll be late at the office. You're not hungry. Get him! I ain't hungry, he says. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, darling. See you tonight, Miss Williams. Fair pair. Will you excuse me, Miss Williams? Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Come in. They say crime doesn't pay. Always kidding, aren't you, Conlon? Long shot. Take the detective's hat. Don't bother. Won't you sit down? Have some coffee. Go right ahead. Don't let me stop you. I understand you and Wingy Keefe haven't been friendly. Haven't been friendly? Why, Wingy Keefe and I were the best of friends. We were partners. He gave me my first break. Poor Wingy. What's a two-letter Egyptian god? Ra. Now, look, Colin, you're trying to get me mixed up in this. Got to check all the angles for her. Where were you Saturday afternoon between 4 and 6? Saturday? Well, well, it's sort of personal. So was a murder rap. Where were you? Well, uh, you must know. I was taking a rumba lesson. The fifth. Right, long shot? The sixth. Fifth, sixth. Who can remember with those steps? Uh, do you know how to rumble, Inspector? Rumble lessons? <laughs> That's a new one. Well, it's the truth. If you don't believe me, all you gotta do is call a dame who was teaching me. Diosa Duffy. Wait, I'll dial it for you myself. Never mind. Diosa Duffy, huh? Yeah. 412 Central Building. She's all right, too. Leaving so soon? Yeah. Hey, what's a thing dames put in their hair? A tree letter weight. Rat. Boy, Colin's getting too nosy. Better call him off. 
Here on the beach, pitiful figures in nightgowns, pajamas, and evening clothes are huddled around me. A few short minutes ago, they were dancing, laughing, and sleeping. Well, I guess that Lorna Queen sort of makes me nip, doesn't it, Bert? <laughs> Tell me, how'd the old man like it? I don't know. He flew to California last night. Oh, you mean he didn't hear it? Well, maybe, but he usually sleeps all the way. How do you like that? I stand out there, get my shoes full of sand, do the greatest broadcast of my entire career, and the old man sleeps to California. Well, don't let it worry you. He'll be back in a month with his decision. It's not worrying me, sweetheart. I'm cooking up a broadcast that will make the Lorna Queen look like amateur night. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> I'll let you know. Well, in the meantime, Big Shot, I got some work for you to do. Yeah? They're moving the aquarium. I want you to go down to cover it. Oh. Me interview a fish? Walnuts. Vitamin C. Ow! On your feet, baboon. We're going to the aquarium. Oh, listen, Jeff, I thought maybe I could get a half hour off. What for? Well, it's, uh... It's something personal. Gosh, do I have to tell you everything? Come on, we got a date with a mackerel. <laughs> I don't know if you should eat that ice cream after all that lobster. It ain't good for you. Uh-huh. It is good. Uh-huh. Oh. 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 Hi, Mom. Where's Grace? She's gone upstairs to change. I told her you might take her out for a ride. Well, do you really think I should? She hasn't been out of the house for three days. A little fresh air will do her good. Yeah, I guess you're right. Say, Mom. Mm-hmm? You think it's possible for two people to sort of bump into each other? You know, like... How do you think I met your father? <laughs> You know, you're pretty cute. <laughs> Say, you look swell. That's a new outfit, ain't it? Yes. Mrs. Morell bought it for me. They're the most thoughtful people. Yeah, she's one of the best. And what's the matter with Jeff? Mm, nothing. He's okay. He's about the finest person I've ever known. There she is, bright as a new penny. And ready to go. Well, good. I'll go with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. See you later. Stay here, Angie. But I, uh... I want to play gin rummy. Thank you. Smells good. <sighs> Looks like my little visit is turning into something permanent. What do you mean? Oh, Jeff, I can't stay at your house indefinitely. Oh, nonsense. Mom always loves to make a fuss over somebody. It's been a long time since I've known a home like yours. My mother died when I was 10. I've had to fight for everything. Well, you've earned a vacation. And you're getting it. Thanks. Say, by the way, Mom's having a souffle for dinner tonight. She'll put up with a lot, but she won't stand for me keeping one of her souffles waiting. You like them? Yes. Are you hungry? Here we go. <laughs> Paper. There you are, son. Thank you. For a job already? Uh, girl has to work.
I caught you. Oh. Practicing, huh? Oh. Hello. You'll never be any good at this game or that kind of a shot. You yelled just now. I was hitting it. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, let me show you how to do it. Now, you stand over here. <laughs> right there. And watch. Now. Take the ball here. Count one, two, three. It goes through the wicket. Then, the idea is to get the ball over to that wicket, you see? Yeah. Now, you take the mallet. I'll sit over here and watch. Oh! <laughs> So that's how you do it. Come on, give a fellow a hand, will you? It's so close. <laughs> oh! I... Did you hurt yourself? I thought my knee. <laughs> you pushed me. I did not. <laughs> Susan, there's something I want to tell you, and I don't exactly know how to do it. Susan. Yes. Then you know. Mm-hmm. That's part of what I have to tell you. I know all about you. And you knew all this time. Well, why did you bring me here? When I picked you up on the beach, you were a story. A big story. That's why I brought you home. All this time you've been pretending. But you were just a story then. That's all been changed, Susan. Something happened today that made it possible for me to tell you all this. I wish you'd told me before. You're not the girl I expected Susan Richards to be really like. Just being in the same house with you. You're just a kid that had a bad break and got in with the wrong kind of people, that's all. Jeff, I want to tell you. You don't know. I don't want you to tell me anything. I know all about you, and it doesn't make any difference. Does your mother know? Mm -hmm. I told her just a little while ago. I may go to London in a couple of weeks. Mom wants you to stay here with her until I come back. And when I do, Susan, maybe... Well, maybe then we can talk about... Jeff, I can't. I simply can't. Oh, I know what's bothering you. That's all been changed, too. If you're worried about Eddie Nelson... Maybe you better read this. Better this way, Susan. He was no good for you. Oh, please. I wouldn't hurt you for anything, you know that. Just leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Take it. Not good, Mom. I better go out. What is it, Ma? She's gone. Gone? Well, that's funny. Meet me tonight, P.O., at 8, E. You see, she's been reading the personals all week. Yeah, that's convincing enough. I tipped off the D.A. that Nelson's going to meet her tonight at the post office. Did you tell them you're going to broadcast? Of course not. Do they tell me what they're going to do? Oh, come on, Bert. Now, you've got to give me the go signal. Well, I don't know, Jeff. Thompson... Thompson nothing! This is my story now. Well, it's a terrific idea, but it's dangerous. What if something should go wrong? What can go wrong, Bert? 
Now look, all I want you to do... just got here. How much time, Angie? About a minute. Jeff, do you really think you ought to? Shut up. Didn't she go running back to him as soon as she saw that ad? Keep your eye on that switch. Okay. waiting outside the post office to bring you this unique broadcast. Come in, Morrell. Jeff, you're on the air. This is Jeff Morrell bringing you an unusual account of the actual capture of a criminal fugitive by the police. We believe this is the first broadcast of its kind. You probably all read it in your morning papers that the hunt for Eddie Nelson, the suspected killer of William Keith, has been called off. However, new evidence uncovered by your reporter indicates that Nelson is still alive and is due to show up here at the post office. Oh, I just pulled up on the other side of the street. There's a man getting out. Could be Nelson. He's almost at the post office curb now. Yes. Yes, it is Nelson. Completely unaware of his impending capture, Nelson approaches the post office steps. The police are all set to take Nelson inside the building. A few more steps and he will... Eddie! Eddie! It's a trap! The cop! Inside! Nothing's gone wrong. Don't you get mixed up in it. Mixed up in it? You fool! He's my brother! Eddie! Eddie! They've captured Nelson. It's all over. And so, ladies and gentlemen, ends another chapter in the annals of local crime. This is Jeff Morrell, returning you to the main studios of the Allied Broadcasting System. Susan Richard. Miss Richards, there is no criminal charge against you, but as a material witness, the court must have assurance that you will be available. Otherwise, you must be held in custody. Have you anyone that can vouch for you? No, I have no one. I'll vouch for them. Mom. That was nice of you, Mom. Someone had to make up for what you've done. But, Mom, I only captured a murderer. And the way you did it, it was mean and cruel. In your heart, you know it, Jeff. I'm taking Susan home with me. Well, maybe I'd better stay away from home for a while. I can live with Angie. Maybe that would be best, son. And I tell you, we don't like it. Mr. Conlon says the DA's office is pretty sore about your broadcast. What's everybody kicking about? You got your man, didn't you, Conlon? We got the guy that will probably burn for it, but that's not the point. You almost messed it up. In the future, lay off. Hey! Hey, wait a minute! Wait a minute, Conlon. What was that crack about probably burning for it? 
He's, uh, he's guilty, isn't he? How do I know? There's 20 guys wanting to kill Wingy Keith. See? Your mother was right. He might even be innocent. Oh, quit pecking at me, will you? If he's innocent, he'll be acquitted. Call the police witness. There was no one with Mr. Keith. And after he shot him, he ran out right through my office. I didn't even have a gun. Yeah, I didn't have a gun. Chief Investigator Lambert of the District Attorney's Office and his staff have presented such conclusive evidence that the prosecution will finish today. The case will go early tomorrow. I sure ran the night kid through. It looks to me like the DA is out to make a rip for himself. What happened? The quickest verdict I ever heard of. Out five minutes and guilty. And you're the guy that really nailed it. <laughs> Forget it. I gave up the biggest job of my life to work on this thing. You know that kid didn't have a chance. They rushed him through the trial. And now he's going to burn in 30 days. Well, what can I do about it? I was taken off the case weeks ago. You told me yourself there were 20 guys that wanted to get Keefe. Not one of them was brought in. We checked them. Checked them. Let me give you some advice. Leave this alone before you get yourself hurt. When the judge sentenced Nelson, that finished the case. Not for me, it didn't. How did you happen to go down to Keefe's that day? I heard he'd been double-crossed by his mob and was putting out feelers to the grand jury. Oh, then he was going to talk, huh? Any time they promise him immunity. And brother, if he had squawked, plenty of heads would have fallen. Yeah? Whose heads? Anyway, they caught Nelson red-handed. Why should they bother looking for anybody else? There, what's that? My notes on Keefe while I was working on the story. Thanks. I don't suppose you'll be down on the clipper to see me off, Jeff. 5 a.m.? <laughs> no, thanks. Good luck, Norm. Thanks, Jeff. Take care of the check, will you? Yeah. Agnes B. Hennessy. I wonder how she was connected with Keith. None of your business! Absolutely nothing. I'm going up and have a talk with Nelson. Your mother's upstairs. I'll tell her you're here. I want to talk to you, Susan. We have nothing to talk about. Now, you've got to listen to me. As far as the police are concerned, the case is closed. But I've been working on it ever since the trial. There are all kinds of possibilities, but I, I haven't been able to get a definite lead. How can I help you? I've got to talk to your brother. And you're the only one that can fix that up for me. Oh, I see. Jeff Morell interviews condemned men in death house. Just another big story. I don't care how you look at it. But this is more important than you and me. It's a chance of saving your brother's life. Now, are you going to take me up there? I'll get my coat. Hiya, Mom. <laughs> You're not looking so well, son. I'm all right, Mom. Just a little tired, that's all. 
And I'll try again. Bart told me to go see Wing at five. When you told me the job was out, I decided we needed money. So I went to Keith. Why did Farr meet you? Was he a pal of yours? No, I never considered him any special pal of mine. When they sent me up, he was just another runner for the gang. When I got out, he seemed to be one of the big shots. Well, why did he tell you to go up there at five? Why that particular time? I don't know. He just, he just said when he'd be there at five. All right, Eddie, go on. Well, I went to see Wingy, and he gave me money. It was when I was leaving, that's when it happened. I tell you, those shots came right through the window. I ran. I, I knew I didn't have a chance. Oh, what's the use? I've never given you anything but trouble. This is the best way. Eddie, you've got to stop talking like that. You've got to stop blaming yourself. We'll keep trying, Eddie. Oh, you've got to help me get a stay of execution for Nelson. Reopen the trial. We'll do what we can. But my office can't go off half-cocked on just a slim possibility. But that kid's only now, got three don't days. don't get excited, Morrell. We know how to handle these things. We'll get the truth out of fire. This is uh, very good work, Morrell. Thank you, sir. You can reach me at Allied Broadcasting. until after this thing is over. Okay. Well, Morrell. Hi, Conlon. I was just in to see your boss. Well, huh? Don't fool around, huh? Yeah, but this time I've really got something. Yeah? I found out that Farr was in Keith's building that day. I just told Lambert. You did? Uh-huh. Come with me. Hey, wait a minute. What goes on? We've got to get to Farr, but quick. going? Gotta blow town. The DA's office wants to talk to me about Wingy. Uh-huh. I don't feel like talking. Well, uh, how about, uh, my dough? I'll give it to you when I get back. I want it now. How do I know you'll come back? Okay. There you are. Uh-huh, Joey. Don't shortchange me. I want my cut. I told you I'd give it to you when I get back. Now, I gotta blow town in a hurry. Get the car and bring it around the rear entrance and don't argue. No, Joey. You're not leaving town until I get that dough. Now, wait a minute, long shot. All right, I'll give you a dough. It all adds up. Why was I pulled off the case? Why have a lot of other things been happening around the office? And I spilled it all to Lambert. Do you really think he... I don't know. But give me five minutes alone with Farr. I'll get you some answers. Long shot. Let's go. Los Angeles, New York, Kansas City, 
Miami? We've heard from every big city in the country. Well, how about the airlines and trains? No dice. Any news? Uh, see you later. Yeah. Hey, maybe he went home. What do you mean, home? Well, I mean where he came from, someplace in PA. I think it was Hamburg or something like that. Yeah, it would be something to eat, Joe. Yeah. Well, I got it right here someplace. I was reading it in Thompson's book. Yeah, yeah. There it is right there, see? Joey Farr, partner of Keith. Brought up in Midburg, PA. That's it, Midburg. Came to town five years ago. Let me see that. Midburn. Come on, Pepper. Okay, Far, come on. What happened? Take care of that man in there. Bert, this is Jeff. They've got Far trapped in an abandoned mine. Now look, Bert, when they get him out, they're going to sweat a confession out of him, and I'll be right here when it happens. All right, Jeff, I'll have the boy set to put you on the air. Get hold of the governor and make sure he listens. Okay. Jonesy, send Mac in here right away and get Mrs. Morell on the phone. <coughs> Let him have it. No use. Too much draft. The gas comes right up again. Why don't you come down and get me? And I'll give you a nice welcome with a blast of dynamite. I guess we better starve him out. Yeah, but that'll take days. Oh, I'm sorry, son. I can't take a chance of losing any more of my men. But Nelson's life depends on it. We've got to get him out of there tonight. Alive. Not a chance. Superintendent, does the lift work? Sure, if I turn on the juice. Well, okay, turn it on. I still don't think you should have come down here, Susan. Jeff, I couldn't just sit there and wait. Get me a mic and cable. What are you gonna do? Never mind, get me the mic and cable. Jeff, what are you gonna do? I'm going down there. Jeff. Here. Oh, give them the signal to put me on the air right away. Morale cutting into program, special events. We interrupt this program to take you to Midburg, Pennsylvania, where Jeff Morell, ABS special events reporter, is waiting to bring you an unusual broadcast. Through exclusive information provided by Morell, police have trapped Joey Farr, alleged racketeer, now being sought for the murder of George Longshot Harrison. It is also believed that Farr may be implicated in the murder of Wingy Keefe, for whose death Eddie Nelson is scheduled to be executed early tomorrow. Calling portable 32BX. Broadcast not ready yet. Keep wire clear. That's a crazy idea. Let him try it, Captain. It may work. Well, I won't be responsible for it. Watch out, Morrell. Yeah, feed the cable to me slowly, Carmen. When I pull on it, bring up the lift. Okay. Start the lift, Superintendent.
Down right where you are, or I'll blast you to pieces. Take it easy, Paul. I'm not a cop and I haven't got a gun. I just want to talk to you. Get your hands up. in the other part. What do you want? I'm Jeff Morrell, the guy that tipped off the cops on Eddie Nelson. So, you want to be a two-time winner, huh? Nah, but you haven't got a chance for it. And Eddie's gonna die in the morning. Why don't you come clean? About what? You can save that kid's life. He don't mean a thing to me. What have I got to do with it? They're gonna get you for killing Longshot anyway. You're not getting me for killing anybody. But you did kill Keith. You framed Eddie Nelson to take the rap for you, didn't you? Smart guy, aren't you? Okay. So I did kill Wingy. He was going to rap to the grand jury and I had to stop him. Why don't you come up with me and tell that to the cops and save Nelson? Go out with you? <laughs> Do you think I'd stand here telling you all this if I thought you were going to go out? Use your head for her. They got you trapped. No smart cop has got me trapped, huh? You see that hole over there? It's another shaft, buddy. It's been blocked up for years. Everybody's forgotten about it, but not me. That's pretty clever of you, Joey. I'm going out that way, and I'm taking you with me. You might come in handy in case anybody gets in my way. Stop the lift! You'll never get away with that. Oh, yeah? A microphone, why, you dare you? <laughs> Jeff Morrell, signing off. <laughs> and the finger of justice has finally been pointed to Chief Investigator Lambert of the District Attorney's Office. He was indicted this afternoon by the grand jury as an accessory to the crimes of the gambling ring, headed by Joey Farr. And now, heartthrobs in the news. Tommy T, the horse which started out 10 years ago as a bidder for Kentucky Derby honors, and which boat attendant on the eve of the Churchill Downs event, has finally been retired to that horse's paradise, the bluegrass fields of Kentucky. This was made possible by the contributions of a group of sports writers who remembered Tommy T this week when his owner was hailed into court for violating a no horse downtown ordinance. And now, names of the news. Today's name, Jeff Morrell. He was married at noon today to the lovely Susan Richards. Mr. and Mrs. Morrell leave tonight immediately after this broadcast on their honeymoon. But don't go away, folks. I'll be back. Oh, Lord.